Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mindbug, and it's an uh, expansion series called Beyond, and there's two of them, and today I'm covering Evolution. Speaking of which, there's also a giveaway link on our website where you can pick up one of our copies of this game. This is a two-player game in which you're going to have a set of cards, you're going to be getting a number of cards from that set, and you're going to be duking it out with your opponent. It plays two players, takes about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. You'll be drawing five cards and either play or attacking with those cards, utilizing them to defeat your opponent's creatures and or to eliminate your opponent by reducing his or her life total by three. If you can reduce their life total to zero, you're going to win the game, but if they're able to do the same to you, then they will win. Additionally, if you have no more cards left, you can lose in that way as well, so there's multiple ways in which this game can end. It's quick, it's simple, it's straightforward, and it plays kind of like Magic the Gathering Light. We'll talk about it, my setup, how to play, and of course our review, and then whether or not you want to pick this game up, and of course enter the giveaway. All right, let's get started. So the setup for the game is quite simple. Each each player is going to get two mind bug cards. Just give each player the two exact same ones and put it face up next to that player. Additionally, you're going to get a set of cards in this deck here. You're going to shuffle those cards, except for the double-sided ones and the rules references, and then deal out ten to each player. Each player is then going to take five cards from the top of their deck, leaving five to be remaining, and they're going to put them in their hand. And lastly, they're going to get three life total points. You can utilize dice, you can utilize tokens or counters, or you can just simply utilize the extra cards left over that you're not going to be playing with in the game. From there, you're basically ready to start and make sure you have any other cards that you might use or utilize throughout the game set aside next to all players. Playing the game is quite simple. You'll have to take one of two actions. Action one is you will play any one card from your hand onto the field. All of your cards are creatures. All your creatures are going to have a name, some art, the number of power on the top left hand side, and then any keywords slash abilities that creature might have. Each of the keywords references what they can do, like whether they can attack twice, or choose a target they'd like to attack, or whether they have poisonous, meaning they defeat a monster regardless of power, and then they might have a play effect when it comes into play, defeat a certain type of monster, draw cards, discard cards, give your creatures specific types of power. Each of these creatures has a unique type of function, but regardless, you'll just simply play out a card. Now, when you play out a card, your opponent will then have a choice. So I'm going to go ahead and play my Cheery Chimp Borg. Your opponent can play one of their Mind Bug cards. Now remember, you only can use um, two Mind Bug cards the entire game. And once you utilize them, they're flipped over and you cannot utilize them again. You can also not Mind Bug a Mind Bug. When you Mind Bug a creature your opponent is playing, you will then take that creature and put it in front of you thusly allowing the player who played the creature to once again draw and play again. Now, if you choose to not mind bug, I can simply play my creature. And if I do that, that would end my turn and I would pass. So, um, like I said though, when you mind bug and you steal this, I cannot mind bug and take this card back. And also, whenever a mind bug is played, the opposing person, the one who is mind bugged, will get to continue to play. If you ever have less than five cards in hand, you're always going to draw back up to five. And if you have no cards left, then that's it. You don't have any more cards left, but you can still play with what you have. The other option is instead of playing a card from your hand face up on the field on your side, you can choose to attack. When you attack, if your opponent has nothing, they're simply going to lose one HP. You're only going to be able to attack with one monster, and if it hits your opponent, they lose a health. If they have no health, then you win, and then each player only has three health. However, let's say that one of your opponents has a monster. In which case, when you attack, your opponent can block with any one monster they have on the field. When a attack is blocked, you'll check the numbers on the top left hand side of each card. The number that is higher is the winner, thusly defeating the other monster. If it's a tie, then both monsters are removed. And there's also abilities that function that can change how this can happen, whether it be poisonous or whether it be tough and all that kind of stuff, which I'll explain in the review. But regardless, when you attack, the person with the lower number is most likely going to die and be defeated. Always remember, you should always have five cards in hand. And those are your two main abilities. You can go ahead and play a card and end your turn and make sure you have your five cards after, or you can go ahead and attack and thusly your opponent can choose to block or just take the damage. In which case, 
guess the next player will get a chance to go, either playing a card or attacking with their monster. And the first person to run out of HP is going to be the loser, and the other player will win. There's a wide variety of different ways you can play this game and reduce the amount of cards your opponent has. There's also a cool, uh, what they call evolutionary start to a style of card that you'll be getting into this deck, which we'll talk about in the review. And this is of course one of the two main expansions for the game, but I believe they all play pretty much the same. Playing cards, making sure you always have five cards in hand, and attacking with cards. And you take one action per turn until somebody's got no life left. Yeah, it's kind of like magic, right? But a little different. Okay, let's talk about my review. Mindbug is a Magic the Gathering light type of a card game. Your objective is to simply reduce your opponent's HP to zero. Your creatures are going to have a power level, similar to the attack and defense of Magic if you understand that game. But I'm going to kind of just talk about this game as it stands. You are playing a very simple card game playing cards or attacking with cards. You can only do one thing and only one of the one thing. So if I have two creatures, I'm only attacking with one creature. If I want to play a card, I can only play one card. There are card effects that change this though. There are certain things that say like, when you play this hunter that is a five power, the opponent loses one health for each mind bug that they have. So if they haven't used their mind bugs, this is going to basically cost them. And if they play this, if you play this card, maybe let's say they only have one HP, they might have to mind bug this card and take it from you and thusly not have to take the damage and instead you will take the damage. So you're always kind of careful about what cards you want to play because of these mind bug cards. Knowing that your opponent can simply counter your spell and then take your spell from you. Now yes, you do get to take an extra turn, but that might be the difference between winning and losing this game. And in fact, a lot of the time it is. Uh, additionally, each of the monsters has some cool effects and they're all referenced here. And it's similar to Magic the Gathering keywords, but I'll go ahead and go over them. So you have Frenzy that lets you attack more than once. You'll swing and then if it gets through and it doesn't die, you can swing again. Uh, there is Hunter that allows you to choose a specific creature when you attack. So I'm gonna attack with my, my Swan here. Let's say that I had Hunter. I could choose to attack with the hip, uh, against the Hippo. Now, normally in the game when I attack with a character, he, my opponent can choose any character they'd like to block or they can just simply take the damage and reduce their HP by one. Hunter lets you circumcide, circumcide that, right? Um, then you have Poisonous. Poisonous is kind of cool. Regardless of the power of your creature, you can simply destroy whatever it is that you are attacking or that is being or that, you're, that is blocking you. Uh, then you have Sneaky. Sneaky gets through everything. Sneaky, if no other creatures on your opponent's side of the field are sneaky, then things like this Earwig Assassin can simply <clears throat> hit your opponent. And uh, then you have Tough. Tough is actually like this Sawn, which is basically when it blocks, so if this Hippo, which is a seven, blocks my five Swan, typically the Swan would die. In this case, instead of it dying slash being defeated, it gets turned 90 degrees. And if it dies again or gets defeated, it will then go to my discard pile. And those were all the main different effects. There's also triggers. You have the play, which is when you put it onto the field. You have the attack, which is whenever you attack with it, you're going to trigger the attack first. It has defeated. Whenever it goes to the discard pile, uh, then it is going to have this effect. An action. An action is pretty cool. When it's on the field, instead of taking one of your other actions, you can take this one here. And mainly they're gonna be from these evolution cards. Evolution cards basically say that whenever you do this specific thing with this specific creature, you then turn it into this specific creature. And all of these cards, well, then there are some other ones that are not just the evolution ones, but and these cards here, they can become more powerful as the game goes on, thusly making them more hard to deal with. And then you have the uh, in discard pile. So this is when this card is in your discard pile, this effect is active. So it's like a graveyard ability that says, okay, whenever this card goes back from your discard pile to your hand, you can put it into play. Or if this creature is defeated and then another creature that's saying the power level is defeated, then it comes back into the field here. There's a lot of different like combos that you can utilize with these specific cards here, but they're all very simple. This is a very simple card game. It's really easy to understand, but it has a lot of nuance to it. And yes, some creatures are better than others, but that's why you have these mind bugs. These mind bugs change the game completely. It's what makes the randomness not feel so random. You're basically getting two spells that are going to let you take control of whatever your opponent thinks is going to be their best card. But they also have that as well. And it's not super bad because you can still take an extra turn. And you only have 10 cards, so the game's quick. If you run out of all your cards and your opponent still has cards, they'll have card advantage and you have to be aware of that. So some cards will let you make your opponent discard
discard cards, which is basically like defeating monsters before they come onto the field. And you can utilize combinations that let you continue to make your opponent discard. Because remember, whenever you don't have five cards in hand, you're going to draw back up to five. So there are plenty of ways where you can combo different effects to mess with your opponent and utilize your opponent's board as well. Beyond Evolution is high quality artwork. It's funny, it's silly, it's simple to play, it's easy to work with. There are a ton of little nuances for a very simplistic card game with these nine bugs here. And this game is a ton of fun. Uh, at first I was like, okay, it's gonna be one of those other magic type clones I'm used to, which just plays like magic, but feels a little different and blah, 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 blah. It's more complex and it has a different type of attacking system. But no, this game reduces it down to the best parts for a simplistic, fun card game. It's it, it just, okay, here's your power. When they're equal, they die. When one is higher, that one, that one lives. You're playing a card on your turn or you're attacking with a card. And it just feels really good to play this game. It feels really straightforward. Some games you might not be able to come back from. Some games you'll have a chance to. And with certain cards in hand or in your field, that's going to be a reality. And it just works really well. Now, it's not like a super heavy thinker like some of these other TCGs, but when those moments happen, it feels really good to play these specific the cards and use them in tandem. And there is a lot of combinations for a very small deck of cards in this game. In fact, you're not going to use all the cards each game, which means you're going to get another 20 or something like that other cards that can be utilized later in different types of combinations. It kind of reminds me of this game called Battle Goats, which is a ton of fun as well. This is an excellent little card game. It feels good. It has its own unique little space. This is a quick game. It's simplistic, and yet it's got a ton of strategy all milked into it, and it feels I don't know, it just feels really solid and really fun to play. I really, really enjoy this one. This is going to stay in my collection as a small game. This is going to come out whenever I want to teach somebody a simple type of like, what, what it's like to play a TCG, but in a more like basic manner, but it still has that meat to it, which uh, I think is going to draw a lot of people in. And I would not advise you if you like these heavier TCGs to stay away from this. I would actually advise you to make me check it, take a look at this because this is a great gateway game for that type of stuff. And because it's so much fun. All right, Mind Bug Evolution. This is getting my seal of approval. Yes, I, I liked it that much. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mind Bug Beyond Evolution. If you're interested, there is a giveaway on our website, unfilteredgamer.com, in the giveaway section. You can enter to get this copy of Mindbug for yourself. There's also one of the new cards that's available on the site as well for you to take a look at. We have uh, other giveaways that are going to be sponsored as well soon. And if you would like, you can also check out our YouTube channel. Twitch, and Facebook at 6.30 p.m. PST every Sunday where we play games just like this one. In fact, we will be playing this one. The Late Pledge Manager is available for this, and if you'd like to pick it up, you can, and I highly advise you do so, especially if you have some TCG players that you know or you're a TCG player. Uh, it's really, really good stuff. I hope that they design a two to four player variant of this game. I feel like you could probably just do it on your own or make some type of little house rules, but I like to see that if it doesn't already exist, I'm not certain. So this is the one I've played. Our website has a review for the basic mind bug, which you can also take a look at by Brian. Um, and we'll see how we can compare and contrast what we thought about this game. I had no negative to say about it, but I really, really, really enjoyed it for what it is. All right, that's it guys. And as always, I look forward to mind bugging your best cards against you next time.